Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Today we're going to be talking about transformations. And this is also called combined operations or the property of equality. This is basically what, what I mean when I'm talking about that. That when you have something on one side of the equal sign and something on the other, you can change it or transform it as long as you do the exact same thing to both sides. If I'm going to multiply A times 2, I have to multiply B times 2. If I'm going to then add 1 onto them, I'll add 1 onto both sides of the equation. Everything I do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other so that it remains balanced. All right, now I'm going to take the whole thing and divide it by 2. It doesn't really matter what you do to both, as long as it's done to both sides of the equal sign, then it will remain equal and your equation remains true. So we need to keep that in mind, the property of equality, when we start looking at how to actually use moving and changing of equations to help us solve problems. Let's look at this first question. If we're going to use transformations to solve for our variable of x, this one here is going to use, we have addition, right? 5 plus x. If you have addition, and then this will be true in all of them, you will use the opposite operation. No matter what operation is there between the number and x, you use the opposite to isolate x or get I x completely on its own. In this case, we're adding 5 plus x, so we would subtract 5. 5 minus 5 is 0, therefore our x is left completely on its own. However, we have to remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we're going to subtract 5 from both sides of the equal sign, leaving us with a value of 10 minus 5 is 5. In other words, our final solution is that x is equal to 5. That makes sense. 5 plus x, or 5 plus 5, is equal to 10. We probably could have solved that one in our head, but when we get a little bit more complicated, it's going to be important that we follow these steps. Let's look at one with subtraction. If you have x minus 20, you will use the opposite or inverse operation to get x by itself. So we have to add 20. Negative 20 plus 20 is 0. We end up with x completely on its own. But we have to do it to both sides. So 7 plus 20 will give us 27. So our final answer in this case is that x is equal to 27. We can do a check real quick if we want. 27 minus 20 equals 7. That looks reasonable. Looks like it's correct. All right, that's what transformations are. And remember, whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other. Let's um, add in a negative number just to spice things up a bit. And our operation here is multiplication. 3x means 3 times x. We're going to use the opposite of multiplication, or opposite of multiplying 3 times x. In other words, we will use division. We have to do it to both sides of this equation. And what happens with this 3, they don't just disappear. It's 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times x leaves us just with the x. Sometimes we will write you know, crosses through there to say that they cancel out, and that's fine. But just remember that we are, we're not doing anything crazy and making things disappear. We're just dividing and then multiplying. And then negative 9 divided by 3 will give us negative 3 as the result. And so there is our transformations to get this solution. So when you see it, multiplication, you use division. When we saw addition, we use subtraction. When we saw subtraction, we used addition. In this one, we see division. So as you can guess, because this is divided, x divided by 4, we're going to use the opposite operation, or in other words, we're going to multiply times 4. We're going to do that to both sides of this equation. Again, just drawing these lines as canceling 4 cancels out 4. That's fine to do. What we are doing is 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times x is x. So we're just left with x on the left side of the equation. And 4 or 10 times 4 will give us 40 on the right side of the equation.
And that's what we end up with. So our final answer is that x is equal to 40. Right? And then we can, again, look at that. What's 40 divided by 4? Well, it's 10. So if we look at our original equation, that makes sense. Now, before we get too comfortable with this idea, we're going to move on to adding in some fractions and making things just a little bit, just a step more complicated. And, well, let's take a look at it. This here, 1 half r is equal to negative 24. What does that mean? It means 1 half times r. Well, if I'm using multiplication, then according to what I've been saying, you would divide. 1 half divided by 1 half. Now, remember we're just canceling these out, so those ones aren't going to cause us any problems. Dividing, usually you wouldn't write a fraction over a fraction like that, but in this case it doesn't matter. You're just canceling them out. And you'll be left with r by itself on the left-hand side of the equation. Now 24, we'll write it this way, divided by 1 half. Whenever you divide by a fraction, we do something called multiplying times the reciprocal. Or in other words, we flip the second fraction and we change it to multiplication. Makes sense. Multiplying times the reciprocal. So now we have negative 24 times 2, which is negative 48, divided by 1 and that just leaves us with negative 48. So our final solution then is that r is equal to negative 48. Does that make sense? Is 1 half of negative 48 negative 24? Well, yeah, it is. So that would be our final solution, and we've checked it to make sure that the answer is reasonable. Again, adding just one more step to this. Notice each question we're adding one more step and one more step. This one here is a true multiple transformation. We have two operations in there. It's 2 thirds times a minus 7. There's a couple ways to solve this. You can either do what we call order of operations in reverse. So instead of doing the multiplication first, you would then you would do the subtraction first and multiplication at the end. Or you can look at it and say, what is most closely connected to this letter a? And we have to get rid of everything that's farthest away first. So in this case, the 2 thirds is, is connected right there with the a. It's 2 thirds a. And then we're subtracting 7. Whichever way you do it, you're going to end up adding 7 as an inverse or opposite operation. You have to remember to add 7 to both sides of this equation. That will leave us with 2 thirds a on the left. And on the right, we have 15 plus 7, which gives us 22. All right, all we've done is the opposite, getting rid of this 7. We've taken that whole chunk, and it stays the same. And now we have a single transformation left. 2 thirds times a, the way I write that, I just write it out like this and cancel them out. Again, in no other circumstances are you really going to write a fraction over a fraction like that, but I think it kind of helps just to show that's all we're doing is canceling them out. Then we have 22 divided by 2 over 3. So we've both sides of this equation we have divided by tw um, 2 over 3. We have a left by itself. And we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, so 22 times 3 over 2. And then solve for that equation. I'm going to kind of go up to the top here. a is equal to 22 times 3 is 66. 66 divided by 2 equals 33. And if we take that 33, we could plug it back into this equation. 33 times 2 is 66 divided by 3 is 22 minus 7 is 15. So we can check our work by plugging our answer back into the original equation. All right. So that would be our correct answer. A is equal to 33.
let's go on from A now to Z. This is the last question we're doing. Obviously, look at how complicated this, are. We, this is. We've got fractions and all sorts of fractions in there. Let's take a look here. Again, we're trying to get Z completely by itself, which means I'm going to pick the thing that's farthest away from Z by 2 over 12. I'm going to subtract 2 over 12 because that's the opposite of adding 2 over 12, and that will give me 0. That leaves me with 4 over 5z, but I have to subtract 2 over 12 from the right side of the equation. And you notice when you're subtracting those, those are fractions. We have to find a least common denominator. In this case, that's 12. I'll transform 5 over 6 into being 5 over 6. I have to multiply the top and bottom times 2, so that I have now 10 over 12. This gives me two fractions with the same denominator. 10 over 12 minus 2 over 12 leaves me with 8 over 12. All right. <laughs> And that was a little bit more complicated, that step. It made us remember when you're subtracting fractions, you have to find the least common denominator and then just subtract, in this case, the numerators for the numbers on the top. And you'll notice that in math, but that's how it works. It builds on previous knowledge, and that's important that we remember things from the past that we have learned so that we end up getting the correct answer. Now we have a 4 over 5 times z. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4 over 5. In this case, um, on the left side, they just cancel each other out. So we can just write them like a fraction like that. And we're left with z by itself. On the right side of the equal sign, we are going to multiply by the reciprocal. And then I'm going to do a little bit of canceling here to make my life easier. I know 4 goes into itself once and into 8 twice. I know 2 goes into itself once and into 12 six times. So when I clear the, the smoke, so to speak, and look at what I have left, I've got z is equal to 1 over 6 times 5 over 1. Or in other words, z is equal to 1 times 5 is 5, 6 times 1 is 6, and that will be my final answer right there. And this one here had a lot more steps involved because we had so many fractions at the beginning, but basically doing the same things we said before. Trying to get z by itself, we get rid of the, the plus 2 over 12. To do that, we had to do minus 2 over 12, and that made, you know, it made some more work for us. Then we got down to this step. We had to divide to get z by itself. That's the whole goal. You do one step to get z by itself, and another step to try and get z completely by itself. Reduce your fraction, or complete all the operations, and then in this case, we have the fraction in lowest terms. Otherwise, we would need to do that as well. All right. So there is the solution for this question. z is equal to 5 over 6. I hope that this lesson has been helpful for you, and have a wonderful day.